Um, and we are now, I believe, recording. Yes. All right. I am recording. So for everyone that's not available to uh, be here on this rainy afternoon, um, it will be recorded. We'll probably host it on our YouTube channel for others to, uh, to check out. Um, the truth is, though, I don't anticipate this lasting an hour. It probably doesn't even need to be much more than 10 minutes because I think uh, everyone, from the most part, um, are familiar with the Natural Resources Atlas. And um, I think one of the, the biggest um, improvements that we could make out of the Atlas is to make it faster. And that was basically the premise for creating the Atlas Light. Um, what we did is we pretty much stripped out <laughs> all of the data from the Atlas and um, provided um, the end user with a product that is really just the base case of GIS information. In this case, it's it's the base map. And what's unique about the base map is that it is a vector tile base map. And what that means is um, we've used ArcGIS Pro, and I don't know if um, most of you or any of you actually took the ArcGIS Pro webinar that we um, hosted last week, but this is ArcGIS Pro, and this is our, our vector map here where we have things such as town, county, village boundaries. Um, we have our parcels data, rivers, lakes, ponds, roads, E911 locations. All of this is baked into um, a service that we host in ArcGIS Online. Um, it's cached, meaning um, it is stored in ArcGIS Online as a tile. So kind of like Google tiles, things like imagery and vector information, we are now also tiling vector information. And what does that mean? It means it provides a, a, a truly exceptionally higher performance product rather than having to draw all of those features as soon as the application loads. We're just drawing a basically a single image tile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually refresh this um, this page. This is the Atlas Light, so the um, the URL is pretty much the same with light at the end, L-I-T-E, and there are links on the full version of the Atlas to access um, the Atlas Light. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click the refresh, and hopefully the first thing that everyone notices is just how fast the site loads as compared to the full version of the, the Atlas. And it, mostly in part because of the cached base map information that we have um, loaded into the map. Um, so it only took a couple seconds to load. Now it says it's still working down at the bottom because it's loading all the information in the background service, but really it doesn't have any effect on the map. So you'll notice that this cached base map service draws kind of um, in this dynamic sense and where it's pre-cached. So as soon as I, I drag, it's already loaded up the tiles in a um, in the adjacent areas. Very smooth, very fast. Um, I think that everyone will find that the the product itself just looks better than the actual uh, or the previous full version of the base map. Um, so if I zoom in a little bit further, you'll see that the parcels start turning on. Um, again, super fast. Um, and you know it was it was determined that probably nine out of every ten people that were using the atlas were using it to look at parcel information with the aerial photo so immediately within the maybe the few seconds that it's taken to reload this application and to zoom in to an area we've already built a, a map that probably could be used by 90% of our viewer audience. Here's the here's a map of a parcel with a house, aerial imagery, with the span number, with the span on it. And boom, you're done. Um, so just a real fast, um, instant map for that, that works for the bulk of our users. Now, I know that um, many of you um, are not just looking for um, a parcel map with the aerial imagery, we, we need more than that. And we're actually, we might actually be creating projects and saving them and coming back to them. So um, as I've done in previous uh, Atlas webinars, I've always said, the first thing you should do 
as soon as the atlas loads is sign into it regardless of whether you think you're going to need to come back to the map or not um, it's always a good practice to sign in because it could happen that you make a map and you only get halfway through it or um, you might um, decide that it is something that you need to come back to um, as soon as you hit the sign in button what's going to happen is it's going to load this um, sign in splash where you can use any one of the well I, I would I would say, well, there might be some ANR staff that have an identity server um, geocortex login, but for the most part, people will be logging in using something like Google or Facebook, or um, there are users within our organization that now have ArcGIS Online logins, and those can be used. So users such as the county foresters, lands managers, um, the the map program now have logins um, enforcement many of you have logins that can utilize this arcgis online login so i'm gonna, that's what i'm going to use so i'm going to use the um, anrgis login um, that is created for our own organization it's going to log me in but you're going to notice what happens is the map completely reloads so if you get halfway through a project and you say, oh, I want to save it and go click login, well, you're going to lose your work. So always save or sign into the Atlas as soon as you load it. Um, so now we're in the map. Um, I don't know. I'll just go into a random area here. Uh, looks like we're going to Heinsberg. Uh, looks like Heinsberg Village. And... Um, Say so I want to start adding some layers. So how do we do that in the Atlas Lite? If, if someone switches to the layer list, you're going to notice it doesn't have the same layers that the old Atlas has. And that's by design, right? Because what, what was happening is the old or the full version of the Atlas was loading all of the data for all of the map services that we have published here at ANR. And it was creating an enormous overhead. And it was also creating um, overhead for the server that needed to publish that information. So instead, what we're doing is we're stripping all of that information out and providing users with the option to add um, layers to their map individually. So think of this as a as a custom tailored web map for your own personal or professional needs. So when the map first loads, you'll see a link right up front that says start adding layers. Now the what you can do is you click this layer and it might come up with just a single catalog but if I if I click it again it's a little bug they're working on it we can uh, we can work through this but um, you'll notice that I've preloaded four separate um, layer catalogs for users to add their own map information and the first catalog is actually coming straight from the Natural Resources Atlas. So if I ex expand this, you'll see all of the familiar layer groups that exist on the existing Natural Resources Atlas. So watershed management, stormwater, rivers data, geology, fish and wildlife, drinking water, etc. So what I can do is I can expand any of these groups. Uh, let's do the, the rivers program. And I'm going to turn on, say, the floodways and the flood hazard areas. Um, and I'm going to add those to my map. I'll click OK. Conversely, you can click the Select All underneath the Rivers program, and it will add this entire um, group of data layers to your map. But I'm only interested in creating a, a quick floodplain map. So I'm going to go check off these layers and click OK. So what's going to do is it's going out to our mapping server and drawing that information directly from the Atlas service. So this is um, symbolized the same way. It's the same data coming from the same databases. But instead, what we have now, if I go back to my layers list, we have a layer catalog that includes only the two layers from the Rivers Program group of the Natural Resources Atlas. And I, I don't know if it even surprised me <laughs> how fast it loaded right there, but you know you, you'll notice that you know this is this is kind of um, a best case performance map right now. I mean, we're um, if I even if I if I pan a little bit, if we were in the full version of the Atlas, it's still um, loading all of those map services 
regardless of whether they're visible or not, to determine whether or not it needs to draw anything. But in this map, it knows exactly which layers need to be turned on and when, so it's not polling for that server for all of that data at the same time. And I can zoom in. It's just it's just a much better product right now. Um, and I think that the bulk of why it's better is just because it's faster. Um, so that's the that's the layer catalog. That's kind of what I wanted to de the, to demo. Um, all of the rest of the tools are pretty much the same as in the existing atlas. We have things like our base map layers here. We have um, the color orthos that are um, are preloaded. We have um, black and white orthos. We have the color imagery. If you're if we're interested in mapping um, flood zones or different development from different years, you can toggle between the different NAPES. If I close that, I can turn back to black and white orthos topo map. So real easy ways for um, switching back and forth from base map information. Um, we even have, let's see, I wanted to show something else here. Uh, maybe I'll skip over that. Um, so anyway, I'll go back to the color orthos uh, for now. All the same ways of utilizing the map as the, the full version of the atlas so far. Um, I'm going to expand the toolbar to show the different tools that are available in the Atlas. Um, and again, they're all the same as the full version of the Atlas. You've got your sign in, sign out. Um, since I've signed in, you'll notice that the tools for um, saving projects and opening projects are now uh, available for me to use. Um, there's a contact us option. Um, so um, I got a couple questions. So Stacy, uh, which option do you sign under? Um, if you have Facebook or Google account, you're welcome to use them. Um, but I would, um, for, I believe Rivers has their own ArcGIS Online account for um, things like Collector and ArcGIS Pro. And since you do have those, um, you should use them. And what it'll allow you to do is, um, since you'll all be linked together, under that ArcGIS Online user account, you'll all be able to um, collaborate on specific projects. So um, say Stacy and Gretchen are working on a, a particular project. If you're saving it in the ANR Flood um, ArcGIS Online username, you'll both have access to that project. So that might be something you do. Whereas if you sign in using Facebook or Google, only you um, will have access to those projects because you're authenticating to your individual user accounts. So something to keep in mind. Um, Heather wants to know whether we can turn on some layers for water quality monitoring. Um, sure, let me see if I can I can get those to show up. So we've got, um, if I back up just a second, I went to the quick tools and I clicked Add Atlas Data in this case. You'll also notice the, the other um, quick tools that exist that are also available in the full version of the Atlas. Um, conversely, if you find out the light isn't working out, um, there, is a, there is a button down here to switch over to the full version of the Atlas. But keep in mind that this is also going to um, reload the Atlas. So I'm going to go into the Atlas, and I'm going to do uh, let's see, watershed management. So we have the water quality monitoring data here, Heather. And I can add things like the, the monitoring for fish, bugs, habitat. Um, there's even an option for total hardness in here. So um, if I wanted to add some of those, I could, I could add them. So um, I'm not sure what's relevant for this particular site, but um, I've got them checked off. So they are now added to this particular project. And I know that this um, that particular data set is um, not necessarily the, the snappiest. So if you find that um, it's not showing up in some areas, you might need to give it an extra second. Um, I just don't exactly know whether there's any habitat or bug uh, assessment going on. I think this is the Laplatte here. So um, you could correct me if I'm wrong or if you don't see them, uh, let me know. Um, 
so back back to the tools i think that answers your questions uh stacy and heather but um this is the the main map tool section up here in the toolbar um, moving on navigation all fairly straightforward um, we have our pan zoom in zoom out zoom to a town full extent previous extent and um, bookmarks and i don't know if everyone uses bookmarks but um especially for district um, staff who tend to go back to sites on a pretty regular basis bookmarks might be pretty helpful for some and what you can do is you just click the bookmarks tab or excuse me the bookmarks tool and you can create a bookmark at the current extent give it a name so this is uh, what do we want to call this we'll call it La Platte at uh, Heinsberg Village click OK and make sure you allow um, the browser to store files on um, your machine or your your phone or whatever because it does actually store these um, bookmarks locally so I'm gonna choose OK and now if I if I zoom out and pan away I can always go back to that bookmark and it's gonna bring me back to exactly where I was when I set it so it's kind of just kind of a neat feature um, something to keep in mind Moving on to the map data tab, um, you've got your show layers button. We're already on our layers uh, catalog, but sometimes people call me up and like, Eric, uh, I don't know where my layers went. Where'd they go? And I always have to tell people, just click the show layers button and it'll pop right up for you. Um, this is your basically like your Windows taskbar for the Atlas. So um, keep an eye on these tabs too. You can kind of switch between them back and forth. Here you got your layers, your Atlas Lite, uh, your home panel where you can do things like going back to adding layers or toggling the toolbar. Um, the layers list also has the ability for um, specifying transparency. So um, you can use these transparency sliders if you find that something's too opaque. Um, you can always back it out. So that's kind of a cool little feature too. And um, also these arrows within the layers list allows you to do things like um, symbolize layers um, on a custom level. So if we wanted to give our floodways um, uh, a custom visualization, what we can do is, um, I'm going to go back and try do this again. Uh, you hit this arrow next to the layer here, and then turn on or off layer cut visualizations. And it'll ask you, what do you want for vis visualization of your layer? And I'm going to choose a custom layer style. And this will allow me to pick um, either simple or um, a basically a classified symbology. So if um, we were doing something like um, particular soils or um, something along those nature, you could you could set it to attributes. So you know your soil types could be different um, symbols. But we're gonna since this is just the floodway, we'll just give it a simple symbol. Um, what color do we want to make this? Uh, let's make it let's make it yellow make it really stand out so we have um, our fill color and our outline color let's make the outline we'll make it I don't know blue who cares there you go in our line width I'm gonna back down to one um, the line style solid you could make it dashed or other variations of Morse code I guess <laughs> and the fill style you can have it um, various fills so I'm gonna just stick with solid and if I click apply you'll notice that the floodway has changed symbology so not only have we controlled the content of the map but we are also controlling the symbology of the map so very ArcMap arc map desktop going on right now and you know I know that there are a lot of people who use arc map desktop and are frustrated with the performance of it but um, I don't think anybody can be frustrated with the performance of this so far so um, really setting up a custom map for our own project purposes at this point um, in a high performing environment <clears throat> um, in the map data tab also we have our layer catalog button which brings us back to that layer catalog um, add layers this is this is something I don't 
believe many people are using, and then I have trouble using it as well. Um, if you, forever, for any reason, are sent um, a, a REST endpoint for a particular layer of a map service, you can enter this here. Um, I'm not going to spend any time on it because it's it hasn't been working well, and I'll probably end up removing it from the toolbar. <clears throat> and um, finally, upload data. Um, this is an opportunity for staff or for the public to upload their own personal GIS layers for um, for certain things like um, if you have a um, a table that have slapped and longs in it um, in an Excel format. Um, if you have a KML, a shape file, or say you have a, um, a GPS track, you can upload a GPX file. And those will all be included um, in the map. And the one thing you need to make sure that you know, um, especially if you're uploading a shape file, is to include all um, the SHP, the DBF, and also the PRJ file of a shapefile. And the reason being is that without the PRJ file, there's no projection. So you'll find that it, your shapefile draws in the middle of Africa. If you don't include the DBF file, you're not going to have any attributes because the DBF file contains the table for the attributes. And then the SHP is basically your geometry, which has all of the information for how things should be drawn in the map. Um, so in this case, what I can do is if I were to go in and check out my shape files, and I don't know if I will um, actually add them here. Maybe I'll add a couple. Um, so these are class four roads that I did for enforcement earlier. Um, if I hold the control key down, it'll allow me to select multiple files. So in this case, I need to have the DBF, the PRJ, and the SHP, and choose open. So this is a pretty big file. I'm, I'm a little curious whether this will open or not, but um, you'll notice that I have the SHP, PRJ, DBF, and I'll choose upload. <laughs> So I can give it a layer name. So I'm going to call it class for roads. Proceed. And I think it'll even ask me to symbolize it. If it doesn't, we can symbolize it later. But um, now it's processing this shape file for all class four roads in the state of Vermont. So this is not just for a given area. So this might take a little extra time, but um, it's really just an example of how you can use the upload data tool to upload something like a shape file. So if a consultant provides you with a shape file that you need to view for a certain project, um, or you have something that you've exported from um, the desktop environment that you want to use in the Atlas, um, you can certainly do that. So um, let's give this a, make this brown with a black outline and uh, the line width a two, sure. So here we go. So it's going to zoom us all the way back out to the state because that's the extent from which this was uh, created. But I'm going to zoom back in kind of our, our project area here. There might be a few class four roads out. Um, so it looks like Levensworth is a uh, class four road here. Uh, there's a couple, maybe a couple other areas like uh, Place Road here. So you see how those those get added to the project. And you can go back up here and you can turn on your layer visualizations and you can even um, change how that is, is drawn in the map. So um, again, just another way to add data to this already uh, formatted map. Um, LiDAR available. Um, if it's not, it will be. Um, I think, let's see, yep, it's in here. So here's LiDAR Hillshade. You can see our class four road going through uh, what was probably a road at some point um, is now class four. So, yep, that's uh, located in our, um, basically our base map layers group down at the bottom. <clears throat> um, draw tools. So if I'm uh, going back to our project area down here, Zoom in, or I suppose I could have gone back to my bookmark. Um, we can we can add some drawings. So I don't know if we need to really get into these tools. I think most people are familiar with the drawing tools. Um, you can choose any any one of these drawing tools up here in the toolbar. Um, single clicks, 
and double click to end. Um, there's the edit option. So if I click the edit and click on the drawing, it allows me to edit the vertices of my, my polygon that I drew here. Um, as well as um, there are there are some options for things like styling so I can change the color of it um, if I wanted to so I'll keep that green transparent parent fill that was the the styles button there um, there's some, some snapping options if you have an existing feature on here that you want to snap to um, you can select snappable layers so in this case um, if you want to snap this um, this drawing to say the flood hazard areas um, it would do that and then this um, the circle represents kind of your snap tolerance so that's where it will snap those um, drawing boundaries to um, and then uh, there's a tool at the end called drawing area and what this is going to do is give you an alert that it's not working but um, what this will do is it'll give you um, the option for um, determining the area of a drawing and I think it might have been because I was in the edit mode there so um, once I finished editing uh, it gives me the acreage of of all drawn um, features within the map. So if I had multiple um, drawings in here, it would sum all of those together. Um, but it's kind of a neat little tool that, you know, if you need to measure something quick and don't need to keep it in the map, you can just hit that drawing area. And also finally is export the drawing. So um, say you are outlining this, um, what is this? It looks like a water quality or excuse me, a water treatment pond. Um, this lagoon here, if I wanted to preserve this as a shapefile to add to future projects or to say the desktop environment, I can choose this export drawings tool. And what this is going to do is zip up um, all of the drawings that I have in the map. Um, it's not going to preserve anything like, um, well, it wouldn't have attributes because we didn't assign any, but um, what it'll do is it'll export out three, the three different um, geometry types. It'll include a polygon, a line, and a point shapefile with any of the drawn features that you have in the map. So say I drew a, a line in here as well and then hit the export drawings. There would be two separate shapefiles, one for the polygon and one for the line. Um, just kind of a, a neat and handy way for exporting out features that um, you might have spent a fair bit of time drawing in your map. Um, so I guess what I'll do is I can I can clear these out. So I'm going to click OK and hit clear, and that's going to remove them from my map. Make sure you realize that the, <laughs> the clear tool is going to remove all drawings. So if you were only interested in erasing, um, say, w one feature at a time, use the erase tool. And then what you do is you click erase, and then you can click on each feature. Um, clear gets rid of them all. Just a handy little tip. Um, the identify query um, tool, so identifying features in the map. So um, point identify. I'm um, just going to go ahead and, and identify the area here, and you'll see um, we identified the floodway and the flood hazard area. I click on flood hazard area, and I get that this is the flood zone AE. And I, if I click on that, it'll zoom to the polygon and give me all of the attributes for the particular feature. Um, same, what we can also do from here is we can um, enable buffering from uh, an identified option. So if I wanted to buffer um, my identification to identify anything outside of those um, polygon walls, I can specify a distance um, and click continue. So that's going to go out and identify everything 100 feet on either side of that feature. <clears throat> and let's see let's so we'll do that and it'll include the the buffer of that point um what else can i do here i think most everyone is aware of the identification options um, as always um, in the map we have map tips that are set up so you can always just click on the map and if map tips are set up it'll bring up the results of what you did in the map so i i just clicked I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see I clicked right here. Um, and we'll see that um, I clicked within a floodway. 
and, and if I choose this option up here, you'll see one of two. That means there were two features that were identified or um, are coincident at that click location. I can choose the next, and I also see that it's the flood hazard area. I can then view additional details, which will bring up the attributes, or I can even add the results to a selection set. And that is a good segue into the next um, tab, which are selections. So what we're able to do in, um, in this application is we're able to um, select certain features and then save those as results. So in this case, if I wanted to select um, floodways, uh, I guess in this case, uh, I can choose OK, add geometry, I'm going to choose a point right here, click OK, and I get, and I get an error, sorry about that. Um, what, the, what we can then do is we add these um, selections as results, and I'll fix that error, but um, for within a project, we can then go back to these um, results at a later time. Now, I don't know how often that might get used. Um, it's it's hard to say. I don't think it would be used very much, but um, it is it is an option, and uh, probably is why I've overlooked why it has worked. <laughs> um, Measurement tools, everyone's pretty familiar with the measurement tools. Um, there's a polygon, so if you wanted to measure area, um, there are the line um, measurement tools for measuring distance. Um, there's also a radius tool. I know um, in some cases people are interested in um, drawing a radius from a given point at a certain distance. So I can go in here, um, add a point and then choose a distance, so say 500 feet from where I, um, I clicked. So there we have a, a measurement of a 500 foot radius. Uh, I can go in and get my areas. Um, I can specify the distance of the segments or the line segments of a polygon. So in this case, if I wanted feet, and then acres is good. So I'm gonna go in here and say I wanted to figure out the area of, I don't know, this parcel here. So I could go in and digitize these um, these parcel boundaries here. You see my segments, double click to end. So it looks to be about a 16 acre parcel with a perimeter of 3,600 feet. Um, there's also an option to plot specific coordinates. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the longitude is not negative here. It's denoted by um, the the easting or the or excuse me, yeah, the easting um, in this case west. So 73.1275 degrees west, rather than denoting it as negative 73.12753. So that's important to note because I think if you put in negative 73 uh, west, it's it's going to give you an error. So um, you can always find that out by just clicking on the tool and then scanning the map. You'll notice the notation. Um, you can because you can also go in here and you can type in um, coordinates. So I'm going to type in, you know, 45.75 <clears throat> north. And if I add that and I can click on it, it's going to go directly to it. So um, something to keep in mind. I think I'm what? I think I'm up in Canada. <laughs> um, so let's see. Let's go back to our bookmark. So map tools, excuse me, navigation, bookmark. Go back to my bookmark. There, back to where I started. Um, so, I mean, that's about it. Um, I don't know. If, does anybody uh, have any questions for me? Uh, you want to type in some something that you'd like to see that probably will will break um, we've we're gone we've gone a little over half an hour here um, I don't know Ryan what do you think anything uh, you can think of okay Ryan says no I think we we've, we've we've covered stuff so um, looks like I've got a couple people typing a message so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait um, I'm curious if uh, everyone will after seeing this will decide that the Atlas Light is is worth jumping ship for. Um, has anybody loaded the full version of the Atlas to see how long it loads? I'm curious how long it takes to to load versus the Atlas Light. 
Let's see here. Oh, Stacy, uh, that's it's a good point. All right, so Stacy brings up a very important um, feature that I wanted to to demo here, and she asked why she wasn't able to identify the parcels. And it's a very good question because, as it stands with the um, the vector tile base map, there is no identification of the. Um, the, the base map. So if I go in here to identify and say I click on a parcel here, uh, I think I have my buffering on too, so I'm going to disable the buffering. But if I go back, um, you notice nothing's nothing's identifying, and that's because you cannot identify on a vector tile base map. So what does that mean? Um, so here we've got the the flood hazard areas identifying here. Let me clear this out. Um, so the workaround that I've created for this is your the ability to add the atlas data. So if I go to Natural Resources Atlas, uh, or excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. The A and R base map data, I can add the standardized and non-standardized parcels to the map, and those will show up as base map data. So now if I go in and uh, if I click on a particular parcel, it should bring that up as a result. So you'll see non-standardized parcel up here. Um, the same is said for printing. So one of the one of the bigger drawbacks of the Atlas Lite is printing and exporting to PDF because the base map itself um, will not show up on a printed map. And what you need to do instead is go back to Add Atlas Data, go to the ANR Base Map Data, select all, click OK, and then go in and create your printable map. And what it does is it gives you a little note about the base map, and it warns you. It says, you know, due to application limitations, the base map data cannot be printed. Um, go in and add base map data. So I already I already did. So I'm not going to include it. Um, I can go back in here to the to the actual base map data, and I can add or remove anything that I I don't want to include. Um, looks like we've got a whole bunch of stuff in here that I can uncheck. Um, but the point is is that um, in order to include information such as uh, base map information that needs to be added explicitly from the add base map data um, layer catalog. Um, John Fay asks, the new standardized parcel data doesn't have areas, so is there a quick way to get acreage rather than using the measure tool? Well, um, John, I just I spoke with VCGI, the Vermont Center for Geographic Information, about this yesterday. And um, the good news is that they are currently in the process of joining grainless data to the um, standardized parcel data. So um, within, they're going to notify me once that's done. Um, it is on their, their radar to be done in the short term. So they are going to notify me as soon as that's done. And when it is, I will um, make sure that that information is included um, with the standardized parcel data when it's identified or it's clicked on in the the pop-up. So um, look for that within the next, I'll say, week um, it could or two. Tim might be listening to me. Maybe not. <laughs> um, anything else? Um, this is the whole save option. So I can, I can go in and save this map, give it a name, Eric's, Eric's demo. Flat map, save. And this is going to save to the account from which that's logged in. Um, so this should be saving to the VT and our GIS account. <clears throat> it's going to give me a, probably a URL here um, that will allow me to go directly to the project in the future. Um, it will also allow me to, through the open project um, tool, um, come back to it that way. I added a whole bunch of data to this, so now it's <laughs> saving everything that I just added uh, from the base map, so it might take a second. 
So here you see, uh, you'll see my URL that I can use to come back to it. Um, and this is only going to work if I'm logged in. If you want to be able to share this so that you can save this uh, URL and say email it to someone that might not necessarily have an account, click the share button and then make sure that you choose to share this with everyone. So you're giving view permissions to everyone. Um, you can even give edit permissions to users that are signed in. Um, if you don't want people to edit your project, keep it in view. Um, and then for guest links, I'm going to go in and generate a guest link, which is right here. And I copy and paste this. And then this is what, so I'm going to save sharing here first. I can then email this link to um, anyone in my program, my group, the team, um, etc., to go and look at the map exactly as I have it set up currently. So it will add all of the layers that were included, the visibility, any drawings or measurements I had. Um, so it's just kind of a good way to collaborate with others that are that might be um, interested in your project. So um, also something important to keep in mind that you can do in this new Atlas light. Um, anything else? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it here in a couple minutes. Um, it's 2.43. Um, probably end the recording. Um, always email me, call me, or whatever. If um, anyone comes across anything with the light, it's not going to be up to feature parity with the full version of the Atlas. We'll see, we saw that there were a couple tools that were still a little bit of a work in progress, but um, that's to be expected. This is kind of a new thing for us, um, but um, we're kind of excited about it. I think it works great. Um, there, Ryan Knox might be giving a, a presentation on the municipal roads data um, and how to access that. Part of that might be how to access it here in the Atlas. So um, keep an eye out for that future presentation and for all future webinars that we'll be um, posting to the group calendar in the future. So thanks everyone for um, joining the, the ANR GIS team. And, um, and thanks especially to everyone that have signed into um, this current webinar. I hope that uh, everyone takes the opportunity to check out these webinars because it really does kind of give everyone um, the um, all of the tools and the applications and what's upcoming to really um, leverage GIS technology here at the Agency of Natural Resources. So um, everyone have a great rest of your afternoon. I will uh, be in touch. Thanks, guys. Bye.